Uh, so, uh, before we start, I'll just give you a very brief introduction about uh, the YES project itself. The YES project uh, was inspired by the 150th birth anniversary of Sri Aurobindo, which was on the 15th of August, which uh, of course you know is also the Independence Day of India, uh, 15th of August, 2022. So that was the 150th birth anniversary of Sri Aurobindo, and uh, that became sort of an occasion on which uh, we uh, decided to have this online platform. Yes, yes stands for you know yoga education and spirituality, and uh, the idea was not uh, necessarily to propagate uh, Shurabindo's teachings or to attract too many followers. Shurabindo never wanted that. Uh, what uh, he was more interested in was uh, to facilitate all those processes which would uh, accelerate the process of uh, the elevation of the consciousness of the human race. That is something which is inevitable because of uh, the evolutionary thrust anyway. But uh, we as human beings who have the capacity to rise in consciousness during our own lifetime are in a unique position to be able to accelerate that process. And accelerating, acceleration would mean the more the number of people who start engaging in that type of a life which would lead to an elevation of their consciousness, the more faster will be the rise in the average level of consciousness. And why should they do it? Because uh, it's not just uh, because Sri said it or because it will be a nice thing to happen, but uh, because their own lives as a result of this start becoming happier, healthier, and uh, most importantly, they start feeling fulfilled because uh, they can consciously feel that now they are truly living a worthwhile life, a life in which the purpose of life is being fulfilled. So that is what he was interested in. And what will happen as a result of a larger number of people living this type of a life, which raises their level of consciousness and in turn raises the average level of consciousness of the human race, the typical human nature itself would change. Because our nature depends upon the level of consciousness, the way we behave, the way we react to events and circumstances, the way we look at our work, the way we look at our lives in general, all that depends upon the level of consciousness and this, the typical human nature would change for the better. And uh, if typical human nature changes, the world becomes a better place to live in. Uh, instead of uh, uh, being self-centered, uh, we become more love-centered. And uh, that is, in fact, the key to the uh, process of uh, improvement of the human improvement of the world, because basically it needs that type of a change in human nature. So, but then who are the people who will usher in this change? Young people. So therefore, uh, our focus in the YES project is becoming more and more clear and we are sharpening it to uh, reach out to the younger people, particularly those who have arrived in this world equipped to usher in that change. These are the children whom Sri Aurobindo has called the sun-eyed children of a marvelous dawn. So we are trying to spot them, discover them, engage them, support them and uh, Today's exercise is also a part of that process and we are happy that we could discover five such young persons in the age range of 12 to 24 uh, who, have, who hold a lot of promise to be participants in this process of change. As you know, the mother said, the world is in for a change. Will you help? So the world is changing, but then we can all help the process. So in a way, we are living through exciting times, as she said, when we have an opportunity to participate in a mega project, a, an unprecedented project of changing the world, partly through our own efforts and uh, leading to a better world. So as she said, you know, uh, to be privileged to live a life in these times, one should be able to give up anything else. And uh, it only looks like giving up. We, are not, we don't really have to give up anything. Because what we give up may look very concrete and measurable, but what we gain is uh, subtle, not measurable. But that is what gives us uh, that joy, that sense of fulfillment, that perpetual peace, which cannot be measured, but then we can feel it within. So with that little introduction, now I'll pass on to Mitu, who is here, uh, whom you have heard on the uh, YouTube channel 
VS YouTube channel several times. She's here herself to initiate it with an invocation and a song. Swayam vidhata ho he manav Swayam vidhata ho he manav Antar me vishvas jagao Antar me vishvas jagao चलो ना मिटते पद चिन्ह हो पर चलो ना मिटते पद चिन्ह हो पर अपने रास्ते आप बनाओ अपने रास्ते आप बनाओ अपनी आत्म ज्योत से पुलकित अपनी आत्म ज्योत से पुलकित अपने सूर्य स्वयं बन जाओ अपने सूर्य स्वयं बन जाओ स्वयं विधाता हो हे मानव स्वयं विधाता हो हे मानव so, स्वयं विधाता हो हे मानव अपने रास्ते खुद बनाओ हो you are the architect of your own destiny. I carve out your own paths. And that's what Sri Aurobindo and the Mother's Yoga is about. No set method. Each seeker, using some basic guidelines, carves out his or her own path. And uh, these paths are new, untrodden, and therefore full of adventure. And that is what uh, this yoga is about. And therefore, Sri Aurobindo has called those who will usher in this new age the barrier breakers of the world. Don't uh, walk on the well-trodden path. Create your own path. That's what barrier breakers are expected to do. Now, I'll turn to uh, another member of the team, and that is uh, Nitya. And uh, she will uh, say something particularly about the Sunlit Path Award, and then call uh, upon uh, the awardees one by one present them the certificate and give them an opportunity to speak for a few minutes. Hey everyone, uh, Dr. Ramesh, thank you so much. Uh, good evening everyone and welcome to the Sunlit Path Awards Ceremony. I think it's, it's an honor to be here with all of you tonight and um, I think this is a beautiful evening for us to recognize and celebrate the incredible potential and creativity of all the young participants that we've had. Um, as Dr. Ramesh mentioned, that I think the the aim and the goal has been to find the the new age or the modern age uh, path breakers and um, you know change makers. So I think the Sunlit Path Award is a step in that direction. Uh, it's about discovering the potential within these young minds and potential which. Um, we have discovered during the judging process that, you know, it aligns a lot with the teachings of Sri Aurobindo. Um, so we are looking at, I think, people who are headed in a certain direction and who resonate with the uh, higher path. So uh, before we move on to the awards, I think I want to take a moment and uh, maybe speak on behalf of all the jury members uh, to acknowledge every participant. Um, the entries we received were truly brilliant and uh, i think it uh, for 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 a lot of us i think the judging process got a little challenging but at the same time it was quite enriching the kind of perspectives we have had from different uh, participants and the kind of um, experiences that they've shared i think it's been truly a privilege to be part of the jury all right let me just uh get the list here yeah all right so uh, the winners are not uh, in 
the order of you know who won the most the order that i'm using here is alphabetical order so uh, i would really appreciate if that is how it is seen um so the first announcement the first winner we have is adrika maji 12 years old awarded for a painting and story titled rosie's sunlit meditations let me just share the screen one moment uh dr ramesh i think i will need your permission to uh, oh, yes, share sure. the screen yeah one moment uh, congratulations adrika uh, thank you just give me a second i'll just share your certificate on the screen okay just give me a moment yeah all right so adrika here uh, we were really happy to read your uh, story and i think it's a beautiful drawing that you sent us um i think at the age of 12 it's really commendable the kind of storytelling skills you've had and i think the beauty is the simplicity and the imagination that you've displayed and you know the the work that you've shared it's, it's truly been heartwarming so thank you so much for your participation and congratulations thank you and adrika please could you start with um, what how your experience was with that and uh, anything that you would like to share uh greetings everyone yes i'm adrika um at first i would actually like to thank the okay. organizers of this event and uh competition uh for this uh wonderful and unique idea this was a beautiful opportunity as well um i got to tap into my innermost inspirations and uh imaginations and i also think this really inspired the youth uh i'm here to talk about my stories uh, rosie sunlit meditations uh so i got my inspiration for this uh story uh from a quote from the mother which my mom read to me uh it was about how to uh how to prevent unwanted thoughts and after she read it we discussed how um these thoughts uh take us away from our work and then distract us with their um hurtful hurtful stories and remind us of some bad times and after the discussion uh she asked me to write a story for her uh she often does this to enhance my creativity skills i uh started writing the story and most of it just came automatically i didn't have to think that much and it was like the ideas were coming like a river flow and the inspiration was very spontaneous and i would like to say that this story is about a girl like me who is trying to meditate but bad forces come and distract her and throughout she finds different ways to uh to prevent these bad forces from coming this uh story personifies the forces of jealousy and uh that jealousy sadness anger and because that's how they are they want attention and then draws us out from our daily tasks and they appear very important and they act like we would miss the world huge news if we don't listen to them Finally uh when all her solutions fail she prays for the divine for help So I would like to uh read a few excerpts from uh my story is it possible to share my screen 
Yeah, just uh, just a moment. Let me. Yes, uh, Dr. Ramesh, could you please give her access? Advika, now you are the co-host, so you can share the screen. Okay, so here, um, jealousy. Uh, she he uh, it was very hurt that uh Rosie wasn't giving very much attention to him, so he gathered all his friends. Jealousy had had enough. He couldn't bear being ignored or thrown away by Rosie. So he gathered all his friends to gather jealousy, madness, boredom, resentment, depression, and sadness flew over to Rosie. This time, they caught her unguarded and entered her mind while she was busy doing her chores, engrossed in her to-do list while cleaning her room. Jealousy was finally satisfied. He happily said, ha, 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 my plan finally worked. Little Rosie didn't see me coming. See how clever I am? Jealousy, madness, boredom, resentment, depression, and sadness played in and around Rosie's mind, having the fun of their lives. After a while, she noticed she was disturbed and feeling irritated. Rosie's mind was filled with bad memories like when she got in trouble in school for no reason or the time her school teacher scolded her harshly when she made a small mistake. The times when her best friend left her for another and betrayed her by spreading gossip about her meditations. The little yogi tried to brush off these sad, angry feelings, but the six evil forces took over Rosie's mind and played a chaos. Poor little Rosie. They teased and joked and laughed. As her tiny head was bursting and going mad with all the turmoil of thoughts. They were all having the exciting time of their life. They were happy that they finally gained importance in her world. So after that, here Rosie has a sharp pain in her head. She ran, runs to the Divine for help, the Divine Mother. And uh, the Divine Mother uh, helps her and heals her and uh, throws uh, the forces out of her mind. And then she asks a question that how do we keep these evil forces um, out of our minds, even when we are distracted doing our work. And the Divine Mother said that these thoughts come, when these thoughts come, we want to watch them and imagine them going far away and not letting them enter our mind. It, and she also says that this takes some practice, but it does work. I'm going to read the last one here. The next day, Jealousy tried to enter her mind with all his friends. Rosie watched the spirits, but didn't let them enter. She thought of good things and the bad forces eventually went away. She also imagined the mother's light protecting her and keeping her safe. Rosie did this every time the evil forces tried to enter and soon Jealousy and all his friends got tired and learned not to mess with Rosie. So I also want to share my painting here. This is my painting. And so I feel that the sunlit path is about surrender to the divine and having faith and trust in the divine. Uh, the divine guides us through this journey and it is a very cheerful journey. We do have to uh, work, uh, we do have to work a bit to uh, throughout the journey, but the at the end, the divine does most of it and helps us throughout this. So this is my painting. So this is like the different forces trying to enter inside of our mind. This is kind of like her aura. Adrika, thank you so much.
uh, for sharing your experience about the story. And I think I think one of the most beautiful things about the story was uh, you you shared the everyday moments of a twelve year old, you know, and how a twelve year old could connect with the divine. I think that was a beautiful, very beautiful, heartwarming story. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all for listening to me as well. All right. Next up, we have Chaitanya Seth, 14 years old, awarded for an essay titled How Sri Aurobindo Has Influenced Me. Chaitanya, congratulations. Um, Thank you very much. Yeah, congratulations. I think um, your essay actually came in as a delightful surprise because um, I think none of us were expecting that you would be connecting something uh, as beautiful as the literary devices that Sri Aurobindo used in his poetry uh, to, you know, what you learned in your personal life via that. So I think uh, what you wrote was really unexpected and refreshing. And uh, I think the simplicity of it and the honesty of it is what stood out. And I think that's that, that was the that, that that was the part that as jury members we really appreciated. And I think it resonated with us on a very different level. It, it was more of a surprise and um, it, it was truly refreshing that um, that entry. So congratulations, Chaitanya. Ever since a young age, uh, I've always had affiliations with the uh, Sri Aurobindo Ashram. Um, especially as my family um, runs the Delhi branch and uh, used to run the Pondicherry branch as well. Um, at, at that young age, I didn't really notice um, what kind of an influence that put upon my life. Um, later, I came to realize after reading some more Sri Aurobindo and the mother's teachings, um, how, how very much they also influenced how my parents spoke to me, what they talked talk to me about, um, what they also tried to um, um, what they also tried to use in their um, little speeches with me. And um, after, after sort of realizing this and uh, coming, coming to know that this was sort of something that also interested me, um, I, I uh, got one, one collection of Sri Aurobindo's poems from my father, um, which is also the main subject of my essay. Um, and in, in this, in this collection, um, are many, many, many poems throughout his time, starting all the way when he was 11 in England till his date of death in uh, Pondicherry. And, um, I, I find it interesting to just see sort of how, how the subject of his poetry changed and like the, the way, the way that it changed the influence that it also had on his life almost I feel like um the fact that his poetry um was such a reflection timeless reflection um on 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 whatever he was going through and I think that really inspires me as well whether it is um whether it is reading certain books writing my um, writing my own poetry um the way I think about things so that that was really what um inspired me and um motivated me to write the essay um the way I did as well um and uh later in the essay it, at the beginning uh, of the essay later um in my life I I I had a sort of um a competition um, based on reading a book and um, I decided that since this book has had so much influence on my life and since this book has really uh, helped me to shape me into who I am today um, and I'm very happy with that person at the moment um, I, I decided that this would be the book um, I would depict myself reading in a creative manner uh, to be specific um, having the book seemingly levitate in front of me um and while while I had my eyes closed sitting uh, in Padmasan and just sort of connecting with his poetry on a different level not just on the physical level um th this was also this was um a something I thought looked really cool um and b it actually depicted what his poems meant for me that they don't just influence me on the on, on the literal level that the way he uses these words is incredible. Um, even though it, the way he does use them, it, 
is incredible, but just the teachings that they also um, have, the messages that they have within them, that they also impact and influence me very much was also supposed to be depicted in the Dimsha. Um, And so that would, I hope, um, that came across then also in my essay. Um, by the way, I spoke about how much he's influenced me just through that one book. Thanks a lot, Chaitanya, and congratulations. I think uh, I also remember your the photograph that you had added to the essay. So that was that was extremely creative. So well done on that as well. Uh, next up, we have Kavya P, twenty three years old, for her essay titled "A Life Charmed by Grace." Thank you. Hi, Kavya. Congratulations. And I think um, I think the most beautiful part about your essay, before I let you speak for uh, what you've written, I think I would just like to say that um, the essay was truly moving. It really created a deep emotional connection with all of us. And I think uh, the, the choice of words you had that really helped us uh, visualize the moments from your childhood and uh, and also see the personal efforts that you've made in your spiritual growth. So I think um, as a storyteller, that was that was a, a beautiful way of narrating your uh, connection with the teachings and you know sharing your own journeys. I think that was um, as a reader that was a very um, a beautiful way of experiencing somebody else's experience actually. So would you like to share uh, what your inspiration was and uh, how did you uh, frame the essay that you sent uh, as an entry? Um, thank you, Nithya. Uh, I want to thank Dr. Bajlani and all of YES team for providing this opportunity. A book that I read when I was 12 years old called The Sunlit Path. And for my inspiration, I sat down and I thought to myself for the first time, uh, never before have I articulated to myself the kind of impact and influence that Aurobindo and mother have had on me. And I trace back to the earliest memory that I've had of Sri Aurobindo and mother. And I realized that it remember how I felt in their presence more so than actual reading or work. In the society in Salem, where I grew up in, I go with my mother. Every week, we buy two sets of flowers, one for home, one for the ashram. And we sit and arrange flowers in front of mother and Aurobindo in silence. And that is something that's really special to me. Because 10 years later, I, I would stumble across something that mother had said about being like a flower and shaping yourself like a flower. And that is that had a deep impact on how I viewed about living my life and navigating life here on earth. And that led me down more memory paths and I kind of recollected key moments that that this was a great opportunity for me to connect with myself on a deeper level and really build on my relationship with Aurobindo and mother. So thank you so much to the YES team for providing this opportunity. This was a wonderful experience for me as well. Thank you. Thanks, Kavya. We're really glad you uh, enjoyed the process and you could, you know, find a chance to recollect uh, your uh, journey and, you know, put it into a beautiful story. Thank you so much. Our next winner, our next winner is Manan Dalip, 24 years old, uh, for the painting titled Sri Aurobindo's Dream. Manan, congratulations. Thank you. I think uh, the digit, it was a digital painting. It was a beautiful digital painting. And I think uh, it's nothing short of mesmerizing. Um, the choice of colors, uh, it, it had a very light ethereal quality to the, you know, the entire painting. I think you truly captured something which was very dreamlike. So I think looking at it, all the jury members really had a beautiful time. We really uh, were mesmerized by the uh, the end product of that painting. Would you like to share uh, what your inspiration was beyond uh, for for creating something like that? Uh, first of all, I would like 
like to thank yes for this opportunity because th this isn't a painting that i just happened to make within a week for this competition it's it's uh it's a it's a practice that i have like i've got two paintings that i have one of madhur and this one of sri aurobindo that i keep it on my ipad and i keep returning to it again and again to work on it and it it took me like i've been working on this for almost a year and a half because it every time it isn't something that i can just sit down and finish from like beginning to end it's it's very fascinating because i never considered like sitting down to paint as a form of meditation and it was uh, it was a very nice surprise to know that even mother herself was an artist and a painter so you know and uh, reading her books and even sri aurobindo's book on when he talks about the importance of art so keeping uh, that in mind i have like both of them as like uh, both of them those the, those two artworks i work on them and for this artwork i wanted it to keep it very simple there wasn't any end product in mind when i was when i started making it i just wanted the it to be honest and simple and i i hope i did justice to it i i don't know what else more to say about it, it it's just a like a meditation practice that i do because when you're painting you essentially just sitting quiet and trying to focus all your energies into this one task and when uh, throughout my whole day there is obviously a kind of chatter but when i'm in my studio alone that's one of the only times throughout the day when i'm just left alone with my thoughts and just one task that i have to focus on my energy zone and yeah that's about it thank you manan i think um, i think we are all glad that you took that time and focused your energies on to that uh, because what came out of that uh, dedication was really beautiful and really something uh, it, it was it was like a dream actually so i think it's uh, it's a beautiful piece of work thank you so much thank you here is our last winner vidisha jain 19 years old for the essay titled why didn't it happen to me earlier vidisha congratulations uh, i'm not sure if vidisha is here but i would just like to say i think a few words about uh, what we felt about the essay i think um i think the essay was quite profound in the sense that it it reflected a sense of maturity and a depth of understanding that is quite rare um and connecting her journey with the teachings that she found on the way i think that was um that was quite inspiring and i'm sure it resonated with a lot of jury members so uh, thank you so much vidisha hi everyone i'm so sorry i think uh, i got disconnected in between i am not really sure where i dropped off um Dr Ramesh could you please help me uh, no, with... you try... no you are quite okay but i'm not sure if vidisha has joined let's oh yeah 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 so i i my laptop went on airplane mode on its own so i thought i had lost right. everything in screen yeah so um yeah i don't think vidisha right. is online ha uh, vidisha is not on all right uh so sh okay should we wait for a bit dr ramesh or can i do no, close no. no we can continue with the program okay okay all right so um congratulations to all the winners uh, we will be sending you soft copies over the email and hard copies will also be mailed to you uh, thank you all for the participation and i think um it's it's been really nice that you are on this journey and i think uh, we hope and i'm we are sure in a lot of ways that you will continue to walk this sunlit path and it's it's great to have you thank you for participating i would like um, 
Sri Vidya to, to take over from here? Or no, from not just him. Nitya? Yeah, yeah. Yes, Dr. Ramesh. Yeah. Before uh, we hand it over to Sri Vidya, uh, let's have uh, audience responses. Oh, yeah, yeah please. Please. Yeah. Ojaswini, you want to say something? <laughs> One of the members of the team, Ojaswini, uh, she's also here, so she's just coming. Hello, everyone. Congratulations to all the winners. I just went through the entries today. I read uh, the essay by Chaitanya, the short uh, the story by Adrika, the experience shared by Kapya, the digital art by Manan, and also the essay by um, uh, the girl couldn't who couldn't join today. So, yeah, it was very promising. It was inspiring. It was like I felt that I have people like me around walking on the same path. So that's uh, like a com felt like a family, like a community. So and uh, the expression, the art of expression was really beautiful. I could feel that. I could sense it. What the people on they were the contestants are sharing. So I think it was really beautiful to read and uh, look at the picture, the painting as well. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Ramesh, I think uh, uh, Neil has raised his hand. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, Neil. Uh, sorry, that was my fault. I <laughs> pressed the wrong button. I just wanted to say hello, really. It's, uh, for those of you I, I don't know, I'm, I'm Neil. I'm, I'm in the UK. And uh, I had a lo lovely uh, stay at the ashram in Delhi um, earlier on this year. And I'm looking forward to coming back um, to see all my friends again. And I just wanted to say how brilliant it is being here and how wonderful the the, the entries and the winners are um fantastic words and and images um and, and to borrow from uh Nadisha's title i often wonder why didn't this happen to me earlier but it's happening now and i'm very grateful and it's lovely to meet you all thank you thank you neil anybody else greetings everyone Yes, Ruchi. Uh, it was uh, very heartwarming to listen to the entries that the young adults and the children have submitted. And uh, going by the events, current situation that we are facing in the country, this, uh, you know, uh, actually draws us back to the same thought again and again that uh, uh, this education, this integral education needs to be infused in every part of our life, you know, of our uh, childhood in each and every school. And the kind of uh, essays and your thought process that you all are coming up, um, I'm sure that, you know, you are uh, spreading that light all across and you are bearing that light and you're spreading it all across and you're doing a wonderful job. And uh, big congratulations to the YES community who organizes uh, this kind of awards, which helps you all, uh, the, the young talents to come up and express yourself. And we need more and more of such expressions in the community today to spread a positive uh, uh, influence all across. So it was uh, really beautiful to hear about your expressions and see your drawings and paintings. Uh, big congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Ruchi. Uh, I can see Durja's hand up. Yes, Durja. Thank you. Uh, it was wonderful to you know, listen to everybody here. For me, the most inspiring thing here is that at this stage of my life, which is you know a mature stage, I find it very inspiring that I'm learning and getting inspired from young people, the youth. And this is a great hope, I think, going forward for all of us. We think of uh, older people teaching and inspiring the young. Here, I find youth are inspiring people like me. And that is what I find uh, quite amazing. And very, uh, I feel very hopeful and optimistic going forward. I hope the seeds you know, that have been planted you know, bear fruit. Thank you. 
Thank you, Duja. Anybody else? And uh, I can see a large number of people who have joined, but their videos are off. You may switch on your videos. Uh, use a better. <clears throat> And if uh, the way I did, I said switched over the gallery view, you do that, you'll be able to see all of us who are here today. Gives us a greater feeling of togetherness and oneness. Um, I seem, sir, there are no other comments, but I was particularly struck by what Neil said in relation to Vidisha's essay, why didn't it happen to me earlier? Uh, well, she's uh, just 19. So it's not too late. And uh, uh, if uh, I were to look back, I think there has to be a right time. Because I was working at a place uh, just four kilometers away from Sri Aurobindo Ashram, Delhi branch. And uh, after I joined that place, which was just four kilometers away from the ashram, it took me 27 years to discover the ashram and through the ashram, Sri Aurobindo and the mother. And it's not that I was blind to matters religious and spiritual before I came to the ashram. In spite of that, it took me 27 years. And in a retrospect, sometimes I feel maybe because I was not prepared uh, for it, the instrument was getting prepared. If I had come earlier, probably I wouldn't have understood anything what Sri Aurobindo is saying. So anyway, there has to be a right time for everything. Uh, before uh, uh, we continue, and now I think it's time to request uh, Mitu for another musical interlude. Namaste once again. Uh, the composition that I will sing is titled Bhor Ke Rahi. Bhor is related to sun, sunrise. So actually we are all, the song invokes that light in all of us to listen to that, to see that and not to stop, to go ahead and hear the auhan or the calling from within. Chalo bhor ke rahi, o ham rahi, tumhe hai chalna. Chalo bhor ke rahi, o ham rahi, tumhe hai chalna. Naru ko agar roke, tumhe path pe koi chalna. Naruko agar roke tumhe path pe koi chalna hai kathin dagar chalo tum agar hai hazaro gam na karo fikar teri raah ka kan kan bani gatan chan के एक दिन देखना चलो हो के रही ओ हम रही तुम्हें है चलना नरु को अगर रोगी तुम्हें पथ पे कोई चलना क्यों दास हो है दुखी मन क्यों दुखी ये मन है थके चरण चलो लेके मन में आस नए विश्वास की शुभ कामना चलो भोर के राही ओ हम राही तुम्हें है चलना नरु को अगर रोके तुम्हे पथ पे कोई चलना आहान सुनो आहान जागे नव प्राण है सपने मिलकर चलो मिलकर मेरे साथी मेरे अपने आहान सुनो आहान जागे नव प्राण है सपने मिलकर चलो मिलकर मेरे 
साथे मेरे अपने चुनकर नवयुग की नई किरने अब नई जोत जगे हर घर में चुनकर नवयुग की नई किरने अब नई जोत जगे हर घर में यात्रा नए हलचल नए अरमा नई अग्नि अंबर नया अंबर नई धरती सजी अपनी यात्रा नए हलचल नए अरमा नई अग्नि अंबर नया अंबर नई धरती सजी अपनी जो तुम्हें अधरों पे मुस्कान आई है हमने वो पाई है करके बलिदान जो तुम्हें अधरों मुस्कान आई है हमने वो पाई है करके बलिदान आवाहन सुनो आवाहन जागी न प्राण है सपने मिलकर चलो मिलकर मेरे साथी मेरे अपने आहान सुनो आहान जगन प्राण है सपने मिलकर चलो मिलकर मेरे साथी मेरे अपने आहान सुनो आहान सुनो आहान सुनो आहान सुनो आहान सुनो आहान सुनो आहान Uh, so the Sanlik Path Award is uh, one of the awards and uh, scholarships and fellowships that we have uh, instituted under the Yes Project. Shri Vidya will now tell you briefly about uh, the other such uh, project, other such uh, supports and uh, encouragements and incentives that we have for the young people uh, who we are trying to spot and discover and encourage. Thank you, Dr. Bijlani, and thank you for such a beautiful session. Um, firstly, hearty congratulations to all the participants from my side too. I just waited for my turn to congratulate you. Adrika, while your story talks about how to prevent unwanted thoughts, for just a split second, I was mildly jealous that I couldn't sit down and listen to Dr. Mithu singing live or even go through all the entries which were being discussed in this. And then we understand, you know, how these emotions play uh, a part in our heads. Um, I request if it's possible for me to share screen so I can share a little bit about each of the awards and uh, also my heartfelt thanks for any such initiatives that are being carried out because when we walk the untrodden path we often feel very lonely and as humans we need social validation every now and then. So when we get that through the YES programs, through the awards, through the fellowships, and we meet like-minded people who are trying to do something different, we form a community of people whom we want to discuss and share with, and we also feel that sense of togetherness or oneness with them. So a lot of um, thank you to all the participants here, Thank you to Dr. Pichdani for initiating these awards and for the opportunity to share these beautiful awards that are being initiated. Yeah, I made you the co-host. My she screen shares. You are the co-host now. Yeah. Thank so you, you so much. Share screen. Thank you so much, sir. So I think most of us know about each of these awards, but I'm going to talk about each of them just so that all of us who are able to see this video later, we're able to encourage others to also participate. We have the Sanai Children Award. We did have an award ceremony a few months back for this for 2024. This is for young people up to the age of 30 who follow their passion to build a career taking an unconventional path. It's usually done annually and a certificate of rupees 10,000 in cash plus a set of books is what is given. So for professionals who are following an unconventional path in need and would be doing something that is path-breaking, please do spread the word and please do help us also reach such people. You all know about the Sunlit Path Award and we have our beautiful awardees here and we'd all have a chance to probably look at their essays and paintings at later stages. Yes, these are our young ones, 10 to 25 years old and the prizes range from 1,000 to 5,000. And as we can see, there are many awardees here. So it really depends on the level of exceptional talent that is shown and the essays and paintings that are talked of. And when we talk of painting be a meditative experience, 
you can imagine the kind of quality of the painting that came about. So this is for the Sunlit Path Awards. Please do spread the word. Let's have more students understanding and following a path of higher consciousness and for us to be able to reach out to them. And for those of us who are above 22, 23 and up to the age of 45 years, and if you want to do something passionate and meaningful in life, which doesn't fall into the so-called well-trodden path or mainstream, and you need a little financial support to indulge your passion, please do connect a stipend of rupees 10,000 per month. And this can be given from any time, from three to six months to a period of one year. That's what this award is all about. And it's really to raise our own level of consciousness and of people all around us. And then there is the Spiritual Renaissance Scholarships of India. Again, in the age group of 14, at a tender year of 14 to 22 years. So for students who have time, school or college students, to indulge their passions, studying, researching, doing social work, something which will help the vulnerable or the underprivileged sections, all of them qualify for this. And a stipend of rupees 5,000 per month for a period of up to one year would be given. It is my earnest request to spread the word, to allow us to form a community of people, young, old, who are trying to do work which is zara hatke, not on the trodden path, and to be able to reaffirm, validate, reward, and become become inspiring, inspirational for each other. Because when we read a story or we see a painting, we get inspired. So please do spread the word. And how do you manage to get in touch with us? Yes, we are all here. You can write into yesspirituality.com or arunima at gmail.com. Please note this down and please spread the word while we continue to spread the work of Sri Aurobindo and the mother. And Try and become better instruments of it every time, trying to become a better human being, doing a little bit more each day. I heartily congratulate all the participants here and I thank Nitya, Aditi, Arun Nima, Ojaswini, Mitsuji, and everyone from the YES team who spent so many hours doing this and the participants for all their beautiful entries and for this moment to the universe for bringing us together. Thank you. Thank you, Sri Vidya. I might also share with you that Sri Vidya is a, a psychologist and with particular specialization in career counseling. And uh, why I'm saying that is because uh, we want to enter a counseling service in a big way. And we already have three highly qualified psychologists in the team uh, with different types of specialization. Uh, so the plan is that, uh, you know, uh, and many have already benefited from it, that you get counseling for, if you want for, for career, uh, whether it's the young people or their parents or both, which is usually the case, then Sri Vidya. If it is about relationship issues, then it is uh, Richa Sharma. And if it is just that, you know, you are feeling lost, you feel that uh, you, uh, don't want to do what uh, you are expected to do in the uh, ordinary world, but yet you do not know what actually you want to do. You are feeling lost. You, uh, you know, various types of existential questions are troubling you, and you just want a dialogue with somebody uh, who has seen it all and uh, can guide you because she has herself been through this type of uh, a struggle. Then it is Aditi call. So you know, uh, this counseling is available to you at a highly subsidized rate, very nominal rate and uh, then the rest is subsidized by the yes project so this is another thing here you don't get a prize but at the same time you get something valuable at a very nominal price which uh, you can easily afford uh, now let me add now my congratulations to all those who got the awards today the sunlit path awards and uh, as mitu was singing Chalo uh, bhor ke rahe, bhor is dawn, the, those who are walking the uh, road at dawn, when you know the sunrise there and the path is sunlit. So it was specially addressed to them. 
And why this emphasis? Because, you know, Sri Aurobindo has uh, said in uh, Savitri that uh, there are very few who actually walk the sunlit path. Uh, the sunlit path is the one which is a clear path. It guides you towards the goal of your life. But then uh, that is a path that uh, you discover at a deeper level by going deep within. But most of us live our life on the surface, driven primarily by the needs of the physical comforts, emotional satisfaction, and uh, by the other external factors, uh, the conditioning which uh, we receive from uh, the upbringing, from the society, the conditioning that happens as a result of the schoolings, and so on. You know, So all that put together uh, makes us primarily driven uh, in a different direction, which is which feels uh, which sort of is designed to satisfy our material needs uh, to some extent gives us some emotional satisfaction, but does not lead to that sense of fulfillment. And uh, uh, what is it that guides us on that path? Primarily our mind and uh, a rather poorly developed intellect. Mind, you know, the emotional part of the being and rather poorly developed intellect. Now being guided by that is like being guided by a torchlight. We can show you just the next few feet of the path. What we need is a much better light, which uh, will show us the path more clearly and take us towards the goal. That is the sunlit path. So the sunlit path is the path less traveled. And uh, why? Because uh, uh, not everybody comes equipped to follow that path. Not everybody gets the type of circumstances in which you will be motivated to walk that path. And uh, if suddenly a person is exposed to too much light, then the person will be dazzled rather than be actually able to find guidance in it. So all these factors add up, you know. So it means that it needs a certain amount of preparation to walk the sunlit path. And that's why few are those who walk the sunlit path. Although, as Shurabindu says, you know, in the quote which you might have seen in some of the opening slides, and the uh, there are many paths which are quite near us, we don't have to travel far to discover those paths which will, which are lit by the sun and will take us in the right direction. But in spite of that, we fail to walk those paths. So that is... Uh, now, uh, I'm coming to the award winners today. Uh, most of them seem to have some exposure, some experience of Sri Aurobindo and the mother already. But uh, in entering this competition... Actually, hardly a competition. You saw that any entry which crossed a certain level of excellence got an award. So effort was made to make it as less competitive as possible. We didn't want to encourage that competitive spirit. So, uh, and that's why the names were also announced in the alphabetical order, which is a great equalizer. So that's the way we did it. But anyway, so most of them had uh, an exposure to Sri and the mother. But then uh, this gave them apparently a chance to introspect, to reflect, to go a little deeper and see how they could bring it into their lives. And Vidisha was absent. Uh, she wrote that uh, she actually started reading Shurabindu and the mother primarily because of this competition. Before that, she had a little exposure because her mother had done a yoga course uh, in the ashram here. So she had seen the books lying around, but she had not felt interested to look at them. So this competition gave her that stimulus. And when she discovered it, uh, she found that there was something which she could bring into her lives. And it's a few simple things she wrote in the essay that now, after reading about Sri and the mother, I have started giving a new direction to my life. Uh, the clothes that I had in plenty and I was not really using, I started giving away in charity. And I stopped buying more clothes if I don't really need them, and so on and so forth. So some of the changes she had gone. And she said, why didn't it happen to me earlier? But then 19 is not too late. If it happened to her now, uh, it will go a long way. She has a lot of time to continue on that path. So, uh, but uh, we hope that we could discover some more who had not been exposed to Sri Aurobindo and the mother earlier. And maybe it will happen in the subsequent years as this uh, continues. And uh, like in all the sessions, uh, we uh, will have the recording uploaded on YouTube. Uh, maybe not as promptly as was happening in the past because some members of the team are traveling and, you know, it's holiday season, 15th August, and then Monday is Rakhi in India. It's a festival. So it may take a little longer, but we'll get it uploaded. And before getting it uploaded, this particular video, we'll get it edited in such a way that uh, in the recording, you'll have uh, anyone who submitted a painting or drawing for uh, the competition, that drawing will also be included. 
so that you will have a better idea. So even those who have seen the live program may get a little more if they also look at the recording. In any case, all the recordings of these programs are put on, uh, are uploaded on YouTube. So all the recordings of all the sessions are uploaded promptly on YouTube. Not so promptly today, but generally quite promptly. And uh, the channel uh, within two years has uh, more than uh, 1.7K subscribers and more than 600 videos. YouTube, you know, these days is serving the function of a college more or less. And uh, we not only have so many videos, but many of them are organized into playlists, which can serve as a teaching course, uh, particularly in the fields of yoga, spirituality, nutrition, and uh, medicine or wellness. And uh, while I'm in YouTube is the college, uh, young people uh, these days are going in for much shorter uh, uploads and those are on Insta and Facebook. So we have a presence there too. And all these platforms, the name is the same. Yes, spirituality. Uh, the same S serves for both yes and spirituality. Thank you all. And... Uh, We can close with a minute of peaceful silence. <laughs>